Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 and 16. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name but to do good and to communicate forget not for with such sacrifices god is well pleased mm. yeah so sometimes we think that we can go to church and we can give 10 people rides home and we can give 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 until we have holes in our pockets and we can, um, hmm, let's see, take on 10 or 15 hats in the church because they, the church needs so much help and they really need us and we have to do this and we have to do that and you don't have time for your husband or you don't have time for your wife and you definitely don't have time for your kids because you are serving the Lord. And you consider those sacrifices worthy of his good pleasure. But in the meantime, when you're at home, you're very critical and patient with your kids. You're very critical with each other as husband and wife, if indeed you are married. You are very critical of your relatives or your co-workers or you nitpick at things that your, that your uh, employees do. You make the job a living hell for them because you are so impatient and intolerant. You're so tired. You're burnt out. And you're burning everybody else around you. But sacrificing unto the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Really? You think so? Mm. Mm. God is not impressed. God does not give stars on your report card and brownie points. He wants a humble and contrite spirit. He wants praise, glory. He wants your communication to be seasoned with salt and coated with love. He wants you to live a life that gives him glory. He wants you to have an attitude that gives him glory. Now, giving him glory does not mean you're giving him an ego trip. Does not mean you're giving God the big head. <clears throat> when you give God glory, think about it like this. You have a beautiful lodge, a cabin. And you have a big plot of land and it's up in the mountains and you want to create a winter wonderland, so to speak. So you advertise and you take pictures. Click, 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 click. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. And you want to make the place look appetizing and intriguing to make other people want to come. Because when people come, you make money. You make money. Hello. So, you have to do everything in your power to draw people's attention and whet their appetites to what your area has to offer. So, you may try to get people with horses and get certain businesses in there and you, you do everything you can to, to just fatten the pot but you're doing it by making everything as attractive as you can. 
Nobody's going to want to come to a little old run, run down rinky dink uh, uh, junky area. So you have to create a winter wonderland, a, a paradise, so to speak, for those who love the snow. Mm. So now you have to put your heads together and you have to do everything to get this done, correct? You have to market, you have to design, you have to reconstruct, you have to renovate, you have to landscape, you have to create attractions. Hmm. Okay, so you know all that's involved way more than I do. Now, think of this. We, as born-again Christians, we want to draw people in and whet their appetites to the things of God. Don't we want to get people to come into the kingdom? And we know the only way they're going to come into the kingdom is through Jesus Christ. Correct? How are you going to draw your kids, your family, your friends, your co-workers, your associates, your sphere of influence to the kingdom when you are acting like a vessel straight from hell? You think that because you are wearing yourself out and burning out the candle on both ends and you are wearing 15 hats at church and you're serving here and serving in this auxiliary and you're rehearsing and you're driving this one and driving that one and you're complaining to your family about being the church's taxi driver and nobody gives you gas and you're you know what? Stop giving out the rides. Take off those hats. Take time for your family. Give yourself a breather. God is not impressed. There are no brownie points, baby. Newsflash as the kids used to say. God loves you. Period. You thinking? Surprised? You do not have to earn his love. You cannot earn his love. You had his love when you were born, baby, when he created you in the womb. The love was there. You have done nothing to earn it. You cannot continue to do anything to earn it. But you want his favor. You praise him. You give him glory. You live a holy life. You bless those around you. You don't curse them. You bless them. You don't oppress them. You bless them. We have to really watch our attitudes, our facial expressions, our body English, our words. Because I'm telling you, it all communicates. And what we do and how we are, our demeanor, will give God glory we will bring God shame and we will drive people as far away from the kingdom as the east is from the west. And the devil is sitting there saying, come on, come on, baby. I got something for you, sugar. Oh, yeah, buddy. Have I got something for you? You don't need God. You don't need them phonies. Them hypocrites. That's right. You come on over here where the real deal is. Let's make a deal, baby. And you, with your brownie point winning self, 
will be the one responsible for driving them straight into the armpits of Satan. So, I exhort you by the mercies of God that you present your living, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, you have got to remember that you are an agent of God. Before you're a husband, before you're a wife, before you're a mother, father, child, before you are an auxiliary leader, <laughs> before you're an usher, before you are an elder, before you're a pastor, you are an agent of God. And if you never occupy those offices, you want God to be pleased with how you have promoted the kingdom by your very being. Haven't you ever walked up to people or you been you've encountered people in public and you say, Wow, there's something really special about them. They're so warm. They're so loving. I mean, I have actually asked people, please tell me, are you a Christian? Are you a born-again Christian? They're like, yeah, how did you know? Written all over you, baby. You want unsaved people to recognize that. You want unsaved people to be touched by your love, to be touched by your compassion, by your patience. God did not ask for drill sergeants to work in his kingdom. He does not like oppression. He hates it. Watch how you treat people. Watch how you speak to people. How you handle. This is God's creation. It is not yours. Do not lord over God's heritage. You go get your own. Get your own plan and create your own race. Do not lord over God's heritage. Many of you pastors are guilty of that too. Okay. I know I sound like I'm fussing. But I'm not. I'm wolfing, not fussing. But I'm making a point. God gave me this scripture. Sacrifice of praise. When you want to cuss praise when you want to fuss praise when you want to hate praise and then love and love will give you the patience love will give you the compassion love will give you the understanding love will bring them to god through you 